to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Anytime. I would like to call the May 12, 2020 meeting to order. Um, looking for approval of minutes from the April 28, 2020 meeting. So moved. Second. <coughs> Motion was made by Councilman Nichols, seconded by Councilman James to approve the minutes from the April 28, 2020 meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Up next is the approval of the April bills. Mayor, I will move that we approve the April bills in the amount of $514,114.80. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Camp to approve the April 2020 bills in the amount of $514,114.80. Seconded by Councilman James. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Up next is the approval of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I motion that we approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay, motion was made by Councilman James, seconded by Councilman Hess to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. So up next is public comment. Um, as usual, for those of you who are not in the room. Um, we have put out now for quite some time that all you have to do is reach out to Liz or Bruce, um, anyone at the city really would facilitate getting your questions out here. Um, I have spoke with Liz just before the meeting started and uh, to date still we don't have any questions for tonight's public comment or um, I guess comments. So unless we have something Bruce, do you have anybody out there in the virtual world raising their hand or anything? Everybody's up there for that. Got it. Okay. Well, then, that will be the end of public comment. All right. Up next, um, number six is presentations. And Carrie Connell, if I'm saying that correctly, Pat O'Toole and Chris Dropinski from Greenplay LLC, along with Kyle Thomas, Senior Vice President of DA Davidson and Company, will give an update on the Craig Recreation and Aquatic Center pro forma. <coughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Okay, so um, for the folks out there from Greenplay and Davidson and Company, we basically have, we're turning this over to you to give us your presentation. Okay, if you don't mind, I need to get Pat O'Toole on the line so that he can do that. Love meeting him real quickly. Excellent. We'll let him get that. At least one person thought it was so much. <laughs> no Zoom meetings, huh? And is it possible to allow me to do a, uh, a sharing of my screen so you guys can see the presentation? Chief tablet in the ground. Audio. Excellent. I've got it. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. yep. Wonderful. All right, so we will go ahead and get started. So hi everyone, and thank you for having us virtually uh, this evening. Um, it's been a pleasure working on this project with um, 
Peter and Elise, um, the foundation committee. We really appreciate it. I am Carrie Knold, and I am a project manager with Greenplay. And Greenplay is a parks and recreation and open space consulting firm. We've been in business just over 20 years, and we're based out of uh, Louisville, Colorado. is our home base, but we have offices all across the country and are happy to be working with uh, your community on this uh, Recreation Aquatic Center um, study and looking at uh, establishing a recreation district. So also with us tonight, we have Chris Drapinski. She's on the, the video call as well, and she'll be here to answer questions afterward. There she is. And then with this, I'm going to actually hand it over to Pat. So I'll be driving the presentation, and Pat will be the voice behind the presentation. With that, Pat. Hey, hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So hopefully, uh, you've got this presentation in front of you. I don't know how big it is on your screen. But uh, essentially, what we've got tonight is just a clips of the O&M budget, uh, the projections broken down into the uh, expenses and, and revenues with the uh, uh, cost recovery uh, and subsidy levels as well. So um, I'm going to kind of kind of go through it with uh, the idea that if you have any questions, we're here to answer those. Uh, hopefully you've reviewed those. I'm not going to read every line item to you, but just kind of summarize each slide. So, Carrie, why don't you go to the first slide, please? Okay, so the assumptions, we had a, a few pages of assumptions on in front of the uh, O&M budget just to explain where some of the figures came from, but these are just kind of the upfront. The budget's calculated in 2020 figures. Um, facility is, is a little over almost 49,000 square feet based on what we looked at. And we put this budget together based on the hours of operation from uh, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Sunday, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. So that gives us an, a, an annual number of hours to kind of uh, shoot for as we're doing the, the staffing and what have you. So the biggest expense, uh, as is very typical in all these facilities, is personnel. So it, it's right at a million dollars. Um, you can see the, the staff that we've included, um, kind of ran all these through, uh, Ryan there to see what, uh, make sure that the numbers uh, fit the local budget and what, what you kind of had going there and, uh, took the, these benefits are actually what the city of Craig, uh, spends. So a, a big percentage of that, uh, is the 65% of those, uh, salaries. Uh, is included in that. Then part-time staff basically went with hourly rates and the number of hours per year, which is pretty typical. Rather than trying to call out how many people you need to hire, uh, you can have a whole bunch of part-times or you can have, you know, three or four full-times that uh, occupy those seats. But this is based on having someone at the front desk at all times that you're open, having somebody off that full-time staff there every hour that you're open, and uh, likewise, building supervisors set up in, in your fitness uh, as far as the peak hours, gymnasium, the hours that, that we're operating. And then you can see we've got uh, lifeguards in there and uh, babysitters basically as a child watch. A child watch is not a daycare. It is simply a place that uh, uh, guardians can drop off their children uh, for a couple hours while they work out or take part in a program. Okay, Carrie. And feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, you're not gonna throw me off. All right, our next section is contractual services. These again are the, the estimates based on what we see in, in mountain cities um, for electrical. We, end up, we can end up going in and doing a uh, square footage cost based on the components, if as long as they're all, we, we can separate them between wet and dry and then combine them for an average, um, knowing that the, the uh, wet electricity and, and pumps run 24 seven and all that stuff. So we've got a pretty good idea and, and a lot of tracking out in, in Colorado. 
Next section is all basically the instructors and officials, people that are paid for the programs at an hourly rate. Multiplier is the number of hours per year. Then we've got things like uh, the telephone, cable, Wi-Fi um, on a monthly payment, equipment maintenance, trash removal, uh, down to janitorial service. This would be once a month kind of for a, a deep cleaning. Also finding that uh, that's going to be extremely important uh, as everybody reopens these facilities uh, in the future. And then the bank fees, which looks like a lot, but that's basically about what we would anticipate uh, paying for people paying with their credit cards for their, their passes. So this portion is about 27%, 28% of, of the overall budget. Okay, Carrie. Next section is commodities, basically the supplies. So we've gotten those broken down into the recreational supplies, including uh, resale and merchandise, which would be you know anything that you might uh, sell, mostly from behind the counter, swim diapers, nose plugs, you know things that people might forget or break while they're there, basically. Uh, vending inventory, then all your pool chem chemicals, first aid supplies, custodial supplies, building and maintenance. I always like to put marketing and printing in there um, to make sure that you, you know, particularly in a new center, that you get the word out and continue to get it out, particularly in a in a pool that runs year round. And then uh, uniforms. Uh, a lot of times, people ask uniforms or what. This is basically staff shirts. Uh, can be a, a lifeguard uh, swimsuits. And then we've got insurance in there. And then I always put a capital replacement fund and an equipment replacement fund as expense items in here. And what we've found in tracking through the years is if we put about 1% in there for equipment replacement, 1% of the overall expense budget, and then 2% of that, by the time your warranties run off, your carpeting in your uh, high traffic areas, those types of things, uh, you will have accumulated enough dollars to replace those types of things, particularly if you put in a, in a revolving fund. So one thing I want to point out is as you look at the the, the subsidy level in the budget, you know, keep in mind that uh, what is that? Forty two thousand of that is basically. Uh, not spent on any one particular item, but probably uh, in year probably four or five and on, you'll be spending stuff out of there. Okay, Kerry. So I did forget to say that our, our expenses there were right at 1.5 million, 1.577, I believe, uh, in total expenses. So on the revenue side, basically uh, what this sheet shows is, is the pricing for annual uh, full facility passes that would get you in the pool as well as fitness, um, broken down into adults, seniors, family, and youth, and the number of people that would buy those at the cost. This cost is about in between what uh, meeker, meekers are, uh, a lot lower. They also have a cost recovery rate. Uh, if I put makers in here, you'd be down in the low 20% cost recovery, which in my opinion is, is um, devaluing your, your facility. But secondly, that's quite a chunk of money to come up with every year as a subsidy. So we kind of came up with a happy medium. We had just finished doing uh, Morgan, um, their facility on the same kind of track that you're doing, trying to, to create a, a new recreation district uh, to expand their, their city boundaries and what have you. And this is an average between what we came up with Morgan and, and Meeker. So it's lower than what Morgan's is. Um, and I, I it, but it does get you at about 50% uh, cost recovery. So we also put annual fitness and annual aquatic passes. So in case somebody didn't want to uh, join the pool just for fitness or vice versa. Uh, likewise, families a lot of times will join as a family in the pool and, and 
mom or dad will join as individuals uh, for the fitness. So the biggest thing about these is, is they got different opportunities. Likewise, a 10 punch pass, uh, which is about 80% of paying the daily rate. Uh, I did lower the daily rates uh, by a dollar. What I, what I had originally doesn't um, hurt the budget that much, but it's probably a little more appetizing. Um, I think I had $6 in there for adults and uh, four for seniors and youth. So hopefully that will also be uh, something that people would try and then maybe go to, to the 10 punch passes, which is uh, something they can use when family comes in town and all that stuff. Hey, okay, Carrie. Yeah, the next section we put together the rental opportunities. Of course, we we do this on. I use a matrix so that we um, we don't rent the facility or over rent it, and not have room for programs, and and likewise not programs that would cut out all the opportunities for people to rent, particularly the multi-purpose room, gymnasiums for for basketball practice and what have you. We've got an after-hours uh, party room in there. Uh, birthday parties are huge. And then I always throw in like one or two. I did one in this case for a full full facility after hours rental. Sometimes uh, we see this is a high school graduation, kind of a lock-in party. So they have all night to swim and, and uh, play in a gym and what have you. And, and this likewise pays for that additional staff and, and all that. Uh, rec programs, again, we, we figured out, you know, how many per year. and uh, the different prices uh, for these programs. And uh, these came again from your, your um, local opportunity. And then the, what we call customer services, that's the child watch, so that would be the revenue. And then the vending and merchandise, which basically um, we, we calculate it at double the price. In other words, if, if all out the door, a hot dog costs a dollar, then you, you charge two dollars for it, that type of thing. The so total revenue is 786,840. Okay, Gary. So every year, and this is again done for you know what what would be your uh I'm not going to say your first calendar year because we don't know what time of year you're going to start, but probably your first full good calendar year. Total expenses, $1.577 million. Total revenue, $786,840. That gives you a, a subsidy and a, and a deficit of, of almost $800,790, uh, which works out to about a 50% subsidy level. Okay, Carrie. And then we put a five-year performer together. This just basically takes the totals of each of those um, areas on the budget, puts a multiplier to it. Um, every year, kind of what we see is, you know, personnel costs go up, you know, two to three percent and, and the commodities, those types of things. And then likewise, uh, looking at a percentage of not necessarily fees that go up, but hopefully um, this turns out to be a, a Great experience for folks and, and people that might not jump on board will, will do so, but uh, again, at a pretty slow rate, but pretty much keeps you in that same, even though you, you're getting in five years, $100,000 more uh, in revenue, you're also spending uh, about the same in, in expenses. All right, Carrie. And that's kind of all I've got unless uh, you got questions or Well, um I'll open it up to council here if they have any questions. Council. The only question I came up with is on your rental fees, you show the revenue is is there additional personnel costs associated with those and are they included in your personnel? 
uh, for example, full facility rental, I assume you have to have lifeguards on duty or? He said that, he said that would come with he had, all the staff, yeah. He had it in the staff for opening hours, but the rental time, no, I he, wasn't sure. He said that. There. Yeah. Yes, just based on the fact that, that there's only one of those, um, I, I calculated those in, in the, particularly the lifeguards. And usually you have one building uh, supervisor there, and but then you have to have a full set of lifeguards. Well, it doesn't appear that there are any other questions. Um, <clears throat> we really appreciate the presentation, and it kind of puts some actual numbers to it for us. So I, I think that kind of helps people understand um, the prospect of it. Uh, do you have anything else for us? I don't. Chris, you want to kind of wrap up? And Yeah, yeah I think the, the only um, – well, the thing I want to add is that this is a budget that was put together that is – uh, standalone. In other words, there was no accommodation in the budget if the city were to um, provide any of the services. Uh, would there be any savings by the city doing that? That's something that you would have to explore taking these numbers and then um, fi figuring out if that was the city's desire to do that, um, what it would cost for the city to provide that service or if that was going to be a partnership of some sort. So that, that would be sort of the next step for you to think about. Okay. Um, yeah. Is and, it pretty common? And I, I did point that out in the assumptions that that was true. If you brought, you know, folks over from the other facility, lifeguards included that were already in a budget and, and this was their new facility to work in, then again, as Chris said, um, this is basically a standalone, but it is based on what you're paying folks. Okay. Um, is this is it pretty commonplace for these types of facilities to be um, it, I'm a, at a at a fifty percent recovery? I mean, what you can charge and what it actually costs to run the facility. I mean, is that pretty average from what you've seen? <laughs> My opinion is it's it's probably below average. Um, I would say we, we see probably the top end. I mean, the top end's a hundred or hundred plus. We're doing one in California now that if they didn't uh, cover their cost, they they weren't going to build the building. So we were very careful to put it together. Um, I'm not accustomed to showing people they're going to make a whole bunch of money and then uh, it falls flat on their face. So. Uh, but that that's a little bit out of the norm. But I would say usually folks are between 65 and 80 percent. Okay. And that would be a national Mayor. figure. And, you, and you're all over the board in Colorado. You, you've got several that uh, come close to that 100 percent. And then, like I said, at Meeker, you're, you know, they're at like 24 percent, I think, something like that. Okay. Anything else from you folks? Um, council? Yes. This is Candy Dildine. Candy. Hi, Candy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, yep, okay. Hey. So I just wanted to, huh? We can hear you. Say that again. Okay. I just wanted to add a couple things too that, um, you know, we've talked about having like AAU basketball or swim meets or things like that too. That, um, you know, that's not in there also, but that, you know, we can um, see some revenue from there. Also, another thing that we didn't um, put in there is like partnerships with the school and the college also. Um, um, yeah, so we've talked about that too. So that could be some of our cost recoveries too. Absolutely. No, I, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. I, I remember those conversations. Um, I, I don't think anyone here on council was expecting this to be a hundred percent self-sufficient. I, I think, I think, I think most. Right. Oh yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I knew that. I just, I just wanted to, yeah, to put that out there too. And yeah, thank you guys for helping us with the grant for this and, um, and letting, letting us present it. Absolutely. Well, I, I think it's something the community definitely needs and, uh, it's just, just going to have to be, as you well know, put in front of the voters the correct way, right? 
<laughs> right. Okay, well, um, do you folks have anything else? Mayor? Yes, sir. Is this um, Pat? Uh, are you still on the line? Pat? Oh, yes. Okay. I was just wondering. Is that a this, question for me? Yeah, does this budget take into a, Do you have a scenario where the, uh, the city park and rec division is consolidated with the, uh, with the new special district? Yes, it is, but it, it also isn't like Chris said, we didn't make any assumptions that certain staff would take these positions. They can, for example, one of these I'm doing in California, the one I just talked about, they're moving and, and we're deciding together already which, and this isn't about a new district, it's just a, a new facility, but which existing staff are going to come to that facility and occupy either a whole position or a half position because they wanted to show how much uh, extra expense and revenues would be in the budget, not, not a standalone like we did here. So this, this is basically, you know, I, I guess you could look at it as, as either way. I looked at it demographically as yes, you expanded your boundaries beyond your city into a, a rec district that, that uh, hopefully people voted in that this was a needed facility and would come support that. Uh, so it, it takes that into consideration going beyond the boundaries of Craig, but it didn't assume uh, any of that merging, so to speak, or how many city dollars or county dollars might come in and, and be part of this revenue. So what it doesn't have in there is any tax support or any uh, support from the district or, or from the city or county the way it sits now, if that makes sense. That seems to me that's going to have to be a critical component for any consideration. Sure. And uh, I don't. I don't know. Are you still not considering a ballot initiative for 2020? Have you tabled that for this year? Anybody? Sorry, you said that. Yes, we're we're not going to ballot until 2021. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, we just felt that um, with all that's happening now, that we don't want to put a burden on the on the taxpayers quite yet. So yeah, we've tabled it until twenty twenty one. Seems smart. Yeah, seems like a safe assumption. Okay, anything else from council? No. Nope. Well, we sure appreciate yes. your folks' time and the presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say that this really gives you the data that you need, which will be really helpful over the next six months to, well, a year as you prepare for a vote in 2021, if that's what's going to happen, that you can have these conversations um, with the foundation and the city and the, the potential district and the county about uh, any kind of partnerships that make sense. And, and so you, you've got a good base now to work from for all of those discussions and figure out what, what does it mean if you're going to have a new indoor swimming pool? What do you do with the existing swimming pools? And what's the trade-off there? So lots of opportunity for you. Absolutely. Okay, well, um, we sure appreciate your folks' this time. And um, we will, I'm sure that... Uh, Candy will keep you posted as, as things move forward here. Yes. Um, yeah, we'll let you know what our next steps are and um, what else we need to do. Okay. Thank you, guys. Was, Thank was you. Kyle Thank Thomas you. appreciated? Yeah. Was Kyle Thomas supposed to present something also? I was wondering well, we had his side. No, unless he has anything to offer. I okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm on the call. I've been listening. I, I have some financing information, which might or might not be relevant this evening since we're still a year and a half out from, from that. So it, it's up to council if you want to have any context on that. We just put together if if this project were to go forward, what would the tax implication and what would a financing look like? Again, I don't I don't have to present that tonight. I've just been on in case there were questions. No, that's that's absolutely fine. Please please present your information. 
I will share, if I can, then a very brief presentation. Um, if the host can read that up for me. Yep, there we go. Okay. So, um, what I will do is just very briefly show, um, we looked at a couple different financing scenarios. One with um, taking the current assessed value and just assuming that it, it grows from a current base, which I think we all feel is probably not realistic. The second is an assessed value decline, which I think the graph will be the most um, useful here. So let me, um, let me go to this graph and just show um, what, that, what that looks like in a second. So this is just a summary. So again, the, the column all the way on the right would be represented by the assessed value decline due to the coal mine and, uh, and the power plant uh, closing. So uh, again, to deliver this project about $25 million, there would be um, some, some capitalized interest, which is um, once this district is formed, there'd be a period of time until you could certify a mill levy and then receive the property taxes. So in the interim, you'd have to most likely have to borrow some money to pay interest during that period. Interest rate about four and a half percent. The average debt service is about one and a half million dollars on that. And then this shows what the debt mill levy associated with that is. And it's about seven mills to pay debt. And then the operating levy, so that's the subsidy we talked about, would, would be about four and a half mills. So the total levy is about 11 and a half. Now that's assuming, as we said previously, this is assuming that this district is completely self-supporting, meaning there's no financial backing from the county, from the city, from the school district, from the community college. It's, it's all the revenues are generated solely from property taxes from this district. So I'll show, um, again, I don't know that this slide is, is that realistic based on what we know today. So I think this just helps graphically um, see how over the next 10 years, you can see the green bars represent what the payments would be. So those payments decline over the next 10 years as there's an anticipated assessed value drop. And the goal would be to have a constant mill levy. So again, that mill levy is about seven mills. And then the operating levy, the subsidy, um, um, again, this is based on the numbers that Greenplay put together. There'd be, you know, they provided a five, a five year pro forma. There'd need to be more, um, you know, a little more thought put into what, what levy you put on the ballot um, for a longer term. How this would work in, in practical sense is there would be a general obligation bond, and that bond is what pays debt service, and the mill levy associated with that adjust each year based on the assessed value, whereas an operating levy would be a fixed levy that would be voted. So let's say it's four and a half mils, that levy would stay in place. So if you were to vote that levy at four and a half in 2022, based on the assessed value that year, and then you have significant declines, then you'd have a loss of revenue. So there'd have to be some thought to maybe making that levy a little bit higher than you needed in the first few years, anticipating you might have a drop in revenue. So the highlight here is it's about, you know, based on, uh, again, no support from the city, county, anyone else, about 11 and a half mills would be the total, um, the total mill levy amount to fund the facility, debt payments, and operate facility. And that's it. Again, I want to be very brief just to give you a sense for, for what the, the impact would be. Um, and and when, you say, uh, when you say that, sir... The, the the eleven and a half mills would be the total revenue. That is is, is that actually fifty percent? You're still counting on the pro forma that um, Greenplay put forth, showing the uh, seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand dollars in revenue that the building itself could generate. That's correct. So what we're doing is we're saying whatever subsidy, whatever negative they show in their pro forma, we're making that up with an operating levy. Got it. I just had a question. Sure. <clears throat> On your um, page one there, you say your operating levy is about 630000 it would generate? Uh, 
Yes. And and based on green plays, they're operating deficits about seven hundred and ninety thousand. So there's a difference of about a hundred and sixty there. Yeah, so I th I think the number we have in here was I believe based on a, a prior version that had a little lower cost or a little higher cost recovery amount. So I think that would need to be um, a little bit higher, which might make that levy instead of four and a half, um, around five, um, around five mils. Okay. Yeah, I, I just didn't see the difference there. So thanks. Levy in Muff County? One mil, what do you mean? Yeah, one mil, I'm sorry. Depends on the property valuation. It's 7% of your right now, what is property for a homeowner, general homeowner? 7%. Well, how much revenue? But how much revenue was it last year for? It would depend on what they declared their boundaries to be for the district. Yeah, got you. But if they declared like the entire county, it would be like $380,000 per mil. I was thinking it was around 300000 yeah. for one mil last year. But if it's uh, a much smaller, three hundred thousand for one, they don't want to do five. Five times, yeah. It would be yeah. one of the largest mills in the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huge fire would be. Well, the city has like eighteen mills, eighteen and change mills, and Tejia Fire is nine and change. The fire district's three, three seven. Three point four nine. Yeah. It would be large considering compared to other districts. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the goal is what thirty. Thirty some. School? Yeah. The school district is the largest. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they have, yeah. Yeah. Those three combined. Are Does anybody have any other questions for Kyle? Interesting. No. Well, uh, Kyle, we sure appreciate that. Uh, that that helps definitely kind of wrap up the other side for us. Absolutely. Happy to do it again. I know there'll be much more discussion in the future as the, the plans come more into view, um, but at least. Gives you a sense for what the cost might be. To Ab absolutely, yeah. I, it's this is the first step. We need to know. So. Yep, yep. You know, it'll be good for uh, Candy and that group to have that information and be able to educate the voters so that hopefully we can talk them into it. Okay. Well, um, if I haven't forgotten anything, um, we'll move forward. And uh, again, thank you all for your time and participation and. Um, I'm sure we'll be talking to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So up next is item seven, our consent agenda, and we don't have anything on that this evening. Um, so that jumps us to item eight, which is public hearing. We have none. Um, so item nine, other business, and that is 9A, discussion and action to review council committee member assignments and board appointments as well as scheduled dates and times that each committee currently meets. Um, Peter, would you like to start with this? Yeah, but I'm going to probably turn it over to Ryan. Here. That's fine. He spent and invested quite a bit of time in putting this spreadsheet together that's in your packet. Okay. And uh, Melanie may have added a few things and adjusted a few things. We're not completely done with that, but uh, I think, Ryan, uh, did you want to kick this off and just take the lead on? Yeah, who knew we had a historical preservation committee? It's not very active either. No. <laughs> so what I did with this is I, I kind of went through the literature that was there as part of the last meeting and then kind of plugged in the type of appointment, um, whether I could find a term that was set in statute or by whoever appoints it, and then whether there was voting rights or and bylaws, and then who does the appointment. Um, there's quite a list. Um, most of them li are liaison based committees um that's kind of really uh th there are some question marks because i didn't couldn't find any bylaws for some of those districts like the local uh emergency planning um to really complete some of that data um, the ones that show where it can be a membership or a liaison there are a few boards where we could do either one where you can appoint a liaison or you could actually appoint a city council member as a member. So that's kind of just a visual representation of everything um, with just a little bit more extended information to it. Sure. And I will I will add to that that um, was it was last Monday? Last week, right? Yeah. I think. 
It's it's in my notes somewhere. We talked to Dan. Yeah, we talked to Dan, uh, Peter, and I, and Ryan sat down, and cause what we one of the questions that came out of the previous meeting was, are we doing this correctly? Are we are we messing up? Are we are we you know not following our own charter, so to speak? And and basically, and I'm just going to nutshell this, that Dan said we're doing fine. You can you can basically go out there and just say, by popular yeah consensus, you know, yep, you're, okay, you're on that. Yep, you're on that. At any point in time, if a council member feels like they would like to be on a particular board, um, they have the right to say, hey, I, I, would, I would be interested in that board as well. And so at that point in time, we would just do that through a vote, uh, right? Yeah, pretty much what Dan said is, is that there's really <clears> – <throat> the charter let gives us a, a, a really broad power and appointment, especially the mayor, right. that if any member of council wanted to – he could require a vote absolutely anytime someone was appointed so you could appoint somebody and then it's kind of like he he said the analogy of the senate the president appoints it and then the senate does a vote on it and then any one of us could challenge it by saying hey there's a, here we could, we could force a vote um he did make a an interesting public policy um kind of guidance that if if any one of these committees ever does do work that he did kind of encourage us to do an ordinance if we ever created a committee that did some type of work or um, parsed out stuff to come to the bigger, bigger, larger council that he preferred just as a public policy for transparency that there would be an ordinance. So that was kind of his guidance for us. Sure. But yeah, he said the way we're doing it is, is fine, but he, um, he did say that if, if your ordinance says that you have to do something a certain way, just make sure you're doing it as far as, um, I could only find two boards within our charter and that's the historical preservation and the uh, Board of Appeals. Appeals. Yeah. Yep. The only two that are in, in, in the charter, yep. or in the ordinances. Planning's not in there? And the, and the other Planning commission? Oh, planning's in there. Um, it's, it's a weird appointment, though, because uh, so council serves as an ex officiato to that board, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah, to they planning and zoning. No so voting. We, we don't have any voting rights. Right. But as an oversight for, like, the local marketing district, okay. we as the entire council this. plus... It's true. Um, dinosaur and the county commissioners are an ex officiato board over the top of the local marketing district. So we all serve basically as ex officiato for that. So this is what I could find. Um, some of it was hard to find some bylaws and stuff to put some of this information in, so it just has a question mark. So then, Ryan, what did he say regarding our economic development committee? Because that is, you know, n more new. Um, and we actually, I mean, we take, you know, as a whole group of all seven council members, we kind of put together a budget and those things. But then those of us that sit on that actually make those decisions. Well, you know, once that budget's set, then we have flexibility within that to make decisions. Did he, I mean, do we need to do something ordinance-wise for that guidance. one? Based on his guidance, he said that that type of committee would most likely need to have some type of chartering ordinance because out of a best public practice, public policy practice because since there is work being done it's better to have an ordinance guidance that way if someone ever comes back and says why was my application denied you at least have this is the process and we do this process for everybody and these are the people that sit on it and this is the and, and we okay. vote to expel funds as well right, right. the so council budget it but the committee votes to grant so we would need to probably the same thing for the charter review committee right so for doing work that comes to council not necessarily because that's more like a work group so we're we're not and that goes to, to public vote yes. yeah. any, any of the changes there but don't we doesn't it come to council before it goes there yep yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Same, same process for writing an, in, an ordinance that we've already got okay. and in theory so does economic development right because they make the rec recommendations they bring them to council and as a council we say well, okay this sounds great or well wait a minute what is this right yep. i mean we have that option more, and really economic count is more of a work group because that's what they're doing they're, they're right. making applications in like if they were allocating any funds like voting yes or no on any budget items then yes, I think an ordinance would be the, right. the proper. We, we only vote on what you already allowed us. Wow! Well, right. right, right. Already appropriated money, and then right. kind of secondary approval anyways, right? Because you bring it to us. Not on each. Not not, not, each, not each individual. No, right. right. As yeah. a as a group amount. This yeah. is what we say we're yeah. gonna. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. right. Bruce said. It. It's no different than part heads than no budget. Correct. Chair. Sure. What do you, his the council approved the appropriation also then other 
Yeah, what, what Dan just cautioned is if you had, uh, if you did have a group recommitted where it was like four members of council do X, if they were to vote on action outside the scope of the full seven, that there would be an issue with that. If it was a mixed group where it's two councilmen and two layperson or whatever it is, but that that was kind of his his guidance. It would that's kind of a summation. And a lot of what Dan said too was keep it simple. Keep it super simple. And, I think and he said you have it. and and you're really yeah I the way I gathered. One of his other recommendations was on the city committees. He said that the mayor should just be automatic on all of them, and then that would open up. Um, well, three places I can see off the top of my head here that we could put we could put a second and they're, and they're all public meetings anyways. So we could open up that seating for more council members to be involved. Awesome. So you would, in, in essence, assume that I make every one of those. I, I can tell you I won't make them all, sure. but I make as many as I can. Um, but then we could still have representation, two council members at each one of those committees. So is, am I saying that correctly, Peter? We just kind of left it the same until you make appointments tonight. Right. We'll change this up to reflect what happens tonight. Cool. Right. Got it. Um, I will make one correction on the Moffat County Tourism Association. That They now meet the second Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Um, typically, those meetings are currently held at the Bank of Colorado upstairs in that oh, yeah. conference room because that's obviously the location. I'm going to assume that's going to change once they get moved to the new location. <laughs> to at the, the Ampa building. building, yeah. But um, that is actually <laughs> their committees meet the first Wednesday, and then the actual board um, and all those committee members then come together on the second Wednesday. So just that one correction. Direction. Do yeah. we need to put a charter review on here? Because that's going to be an ongoing thing for a while, right? For a while, it sure is. Um, I would I would assume that would be city committee. Is is this sound correct? Or is that just a board? That's a committee. Uh, is everybody invited to that, or have you assigned members to be on that? Well, so far we have assigned members from council and from the community. And from the community, yep. It's, it's kind of like the joint service work group, too. It's we similar, sure right. right. We can add it. Yeah. Right. right. Under the committees. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, Sounds reasonable, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Peter, you brought it up that in Rangeley, they, they appoint the mayor basically to everything. Because that way you have three people available to make a meeting. Right. And the mayor is just an automatic appointee to everything. And then if you don't make it, you've, you've got three people that can show up. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> and then what are council's thoughts? I know I've mentioned this before. I think it's important for us to have a representative just liaison. You just go and sit at the meetings for the hospital board because we weren't sure where that was going to oh, go yeah, as far as, um, yeah. you know, were they going to be bought out? And then that whole structure might change. Um, you know, as of right now, that is a, you know, it's county run. Um, I, I mean, I just think it's a great idea and for I, us to have someone there. You I know. think that that's actually happened. Okay. Well, I think right. Peter. I've didn't, gone to a Steve, few. didn't you sign up for something there? I did not sign up for the hospital. Okay. Well, maybe I did. Andy reached out about the community. Yeah. Well, it reached out. Oh, the yeah, Ryan Hess and I are on it. That's, that's right. Not the hospital that's, board. But that's not the hospital board. That's the that's the victim's advocate. It's, it's, it's okay. A well, but they, right. Andy did send out something about their sister corporation right. on the board. Right. So I did put interest right. in that, but yeah, I'd be more willing to go to the... And I think they meet the third Thursday, but I would say just reach out and make sure. I've, um, but yeah, but I, I just think it's a great idea for us to just have, again, representation there. You basically just sit and listen. You're, again, just like we do, you report At back to the most of them, right? Yeah. But I think it's, I think because I think when some of that stuff was happening and um, I think their board felt like you know, we no one comes to these meetings unless you're coming to complain about something. So I think yeah. it was just it would just be good for us to have a face there. Yeah. Should we have that victim's advocate on here too? Or? I, I suppose anything that we're that you we're know, a part of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's newer, but yes. I mean, I, I would assume that we would add that to the list, probably on, I guess, board appointments for that particular one. I have somebody go to complain about the hospital board meeting. Is is that what I hear? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's exactly yeah. what yeah. she said. It yeah. might be all seven of us. <laughs> 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 we'll call them our grievance troll. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's other things that we participate in on a regular basis that we don't represent on this. So yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. That's kind of part of this, too, is... is Just kind of clean it up a little bit. Adjusting it down. Yep, to charter, sure. hospital, victim's advocate, those all probably need to be on there. So in our, in our agenda tonight, we can have this discussion, and it looks like we can take action. So I guess I would... I would look to council for a recommendation on the city committees. I guess we just start there. 
-hmm. it, we threw out the idea that uh, from from Dan, from our legal counsel, that the mayor could just kind of be off to the side and committed to the loony bin. But um, you do anyway, right? Right, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, they, you, you, well, no, I mean that's normal yeah. operating. It's kind of funny how you came in. With that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I felt it. Looking, I knew where it was coming from. Are we looking right now just the ones that are highlighted with your name? I, I well, no. So basically, I would what I would say is I don't see any reason why there can't be. In some of these, you see where there's kind of right, like yep. two or three people, right? Yep. Like economic development. Um, I, I'm assuming, and and I guess that's an assumption, so we can clarify that. <coughs> push my name off to the side and anywhere anybody would like to step up, maybe we only have the person and the backup for finance and government. But maybe somebody says, well, I'd, I'd like to be there too. So maybe Andrea and Paul are primary and Chris can go as well. They're, they're, they're public meetings, so there, there's no issues with more than, you know, I mean, two or three of us can go to that. Yep. So I guess what I'm saying is if everybody's comfortable with that, I, I don't know if it needs to be a motion Peter, I'm not sure exactly how to proceed with that. Well, I think we take this uh, very simply and just yep. appoint all of the boards on the committees, Yep. Make sure, or all the committee members that they want to change or slip into those slots, and then have a motion on the committees and be, and be done with and it. And then move down to the board appointments. Got it. The the most simplistic way to do it. Yeah. And now, if I understand correctly, though, right now, like finance and government, Chris and I together sit on that. So if Peter has something that comes up, he contacts both of us. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a backup person. Whereas our board appointments, we actually do have a backup. Is Absolutely. That, I, mean, is that I think this correct? is more of a combined in the committees, right? Okay. Right. That's probably why it doesn't say primary and backup above it. You're probably okay. absolutely right. Okay. So I would like to, I, I not me and Steve talked about this. I, I pull off of the economic development and allow Steve to step onto that one. But I would like to go to the joint services just because I'm going to be probably on that. I'm hoping to be sure. on that once I go sure. to another side, too, if that's possible. So instead of taking Jared off joint services and I'm putting just, me there um, with Chris and then Steve takes my spot on if that. If everybody's okay with it. Yeah. If everybody's okay with Steve doing that. <clears throat> and is everybody comfortable with the idea of the mayor just being – Everywhere. A given yeah. <laughs> on the committee. No, I'm fine with that. Kind of standard practice. Okay, I, I just want to make sure. I as just... long as you sing Johnny Cash, I've been everywhere. Been everywhere. <laughs> You're walking music. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I can just, I could push my name off of joint services. I go to that meeting anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, so, Tony, you want to come down to joint services. Jared go, goes off to the third column. Yeah. And Chris. Non-existent card. Right. I like that. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Do we need to go through these and make sure everybody's all right with all of it? Or? <laughs> no, I think we're good. I think yeah. general consent. He said general yeah. consent was. If somebody was doesn't sufficient. want that to happen, they can speak. Yeah, up, right, right yep. now. Exactly. Yep. This was a very informal process. Right. <laughs> Sweet. And we like <laughs> to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. Since it's not specifically sure it's not even spelled out. out. Yeah. Right. Right. And you're going to, I, I assume, between. You and Liz will come up with a new list for us and email that to everyone, yeah, right? Good. So we can kind of see where we're supposed to be at certain times. Yep. Okay, so so we spoke to joint services. Uh, we spoke to economic development. I'm just looking to council for anyone to speak up for anything else. Can I, Steve? Steve, you're coming on to economic development? Yeah. Okay. Would anyone like to come to Parks and Rec or Planning and Development? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm there. If you, you are. If we're gonna push your name off. I don't mind being the primary or. I don't think we're doing there's it. that in this situation, like Andrea pointed out. Yeah, so I think you and I are given. Yep. Just saying, someone else is. Yeah. More than welcome. We're throwing that out there now. I, I just can't plan anything right now. I've been like at least six days a week. Sure. So, once I get staffed up, then you know I would revisit this and yeah. I think that's fair to say at any point sure. in time if you feel like you have time and want to get to a committee reach out to peter let him know and we probably it could probably be that simple or maybe we bring it up in council as well yeah. okay parks meets uh, in the evening too at five five thirty that might um, be a little uh, easier i don't I know we don't get out of there until yeah, about zoom seven yeah, zoom. zoom yeah it's yeah. <laughs> that zoom is awesome i caught the first part of this meeting on zoom all the way in so. nice. nice yeah no i i don't get out of there normally until seven thirty, and we're gonna probably be expanding our hours soon okay so that's kind of where I'm at on that. So it sounds like then for city committees, we're good for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ryan, are you? Well, I'm checking on oh. the 
the planning one that if we actually have to we have to do a separate vote on that. I'm just reading the charter to make sure that, because if you were appointed on that for a term, that, well, that's the only confusion on that because that one is a chartered one. So we have to follow what the charter tells this us. This is planning and development. This is not the planning and zoning committee. Oh, okay, so it's this different. Is, uh, just if we have a special project and we need some input. Uh, so this is planning and development. Yeah. If yeah. that's the third Monday, I already have a CNCC, so. Then that worked? I thought that was the planning. Who's, who's going to planning? Well, that's earlier in the day, though. Oh, right. Isn't that what you attend, Jared? Planning commission? Yeah, planning and development? Yeah. That's P and Z, right? Yeah. Planning and zoning. You're not a voting member on that. No, though. I just sit there. I don't yeah, vote. You just, you know, yeah. liaise. I think it's all, yeah. yeah. You give the council's perspective every now and then. Yes. Time. Let you know what was discussed, and yeah. I get copied on the emails from Arlen, same as commissioners. Okay, I, I'm assuming that plan, this planning and development is not a board appointment because council members are not permitted to sit on that board. Right. So if you attend that meeting, you attend as an ex officio. And uh, <clears throat> so we really don't have any board appointments for planning and zoning. Now, planning and development, uh, I perceive that to be a uh, council committee that uh, if we had a project going that we needed some input on or we needed to do something that was fairly significant that w w was unbudgeted we might want to go to the committee first and explain what's happening to the on that project we need to put a new sewer line up this way or we need to do so here's where this needs cleaned up then because we meet the third monday at 6 p.m when there's something to talk about and that's planning and zoning. Planning and zoning. And that's, <clears throat> that's, not planning. that's not planning and development. <clears throat> excuse me, planning and development. Okay. So I don't see, <clears throat> excuse me, planning and zoning anywhere in our board appointments. Yeah. Right. So I would, I guess I would assume we would drop down to board appointments. We would add planning and zoning, and we'd put monthly third Monday at 6 p.m. And then for planning and development, we would put to be determined mm -hmm. right. when necessary. <laughs> yeah. Varies. Nothing. <laughs> Varies, yeah. <laughs> Is that is that what you're saying, Peter? Well, I thought this was a different committee than planning and zoning. So it, it very well can be. I've never met for planning and development mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. Yeah, we haven't convened a meeting yet. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to clean that up then. That's so that just needs cleaned planning up again. Zoning, and then that's we need to make like a planning and development one and just say to be the right. Meeting. Right. Okay. Perfect. Is Board of Appeals? Yeah, it is on here. Good. Okay. So, Liz, you got that typo correction, I guess? Okay. So that being said, um, <coughs> Ryan, anything else on committees? No, I think we just need to add the those three that we talked about that aren't on the list. The charter review. Committee. The charter review. Um, probably add the hospital onto there. Okay. I put it down here in board appointments. Is that, is that where you wanted that? Yeah, I guess, I mean, that's where it seems to, to fit the best and then bifurcate the zoning um, or the planning and development from an ex officiato to planning and zoning. I think that's the only. And planning and zoning would be under board appointments. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because that would be an ex officiato appointment by you. Okay. And and on the charter review, we have, there's four of us, right? There's the mayor and then us three. Yeah. Yep. And then we have who, who three? It's uh, myself and Ryan and Paul. Okay. And just so for the record, it's also uh, Sherman. Yeah. Randy Call. Mark. Yeah. Mark Cam yeah. Cameron. And Vicky and, sit on that also? Oh, and Vicky Heiser. Vicky. Yeah, Vicky does. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know if we were putting everybody on there, but. I, I don't know just that they need to be just, on here. Yeah. Just I just, for the record. Yep. Yep. Council purposes, you've got them. Okay. And did we add a Parks and Rec appointment? No, I, well, no, I mean, just unless here. somebody wants to be. Ryan, yeah. okay. I like both parks and recreation. <laughs> and um, okay. Did we determine who's going to the hospital? Because that was one of the three we talked about, right? Yeah, I've except for when they went to Zoom, I've been going to um, all but the last two. So. Yeah be more than willing to do that too so is there anyone else with any interest because most of these have at least two people yep anybody else interested in hospital i don't mind being the backup if you need it and i'll okay. try to make those when i can but okay. yeah okay and then the last one would be the victim's advocate which is you and i 
that one would be appointed by them or oh, that's send a liaison if it's not a they've already selected you two guys right yeah yeah, yeah. well i haven't heard anything and we yeah, sent our names in you're voting members of that well i've got emails are they say, voting members that's yeah. confirmed well, yeah perfect yeah we just need to get times for that right right yeah. i think i have times for it i'll send them to you it's only six times a year so. okay cool. i think that cleans up a lot of stuff so yeah so now we move on to board appointments looks that way Kind of did. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Unannounced. <laughs> I don't mind being on the, I can do the uh, the airport board because it's uh, first Monday and I'm off Mondays. Yeah, I'm not looking to step down, but I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, if you're just on there, all of them, right? Well, I don't know about the board appointments. Oh, okay. Was that just the committees or... Well, that, I guess I'm looking for clarification. That one right there, the the airport board, I believe, is appointed by the county commissioners, if I'm correct. Because you you you're on the official site. You're yep. a member of it. Yep. Oh, and a voting no, member. No, the okay, city the city yeah. gets automatic one representation. Yep. Oh, do they? Yeah, yeah. So we get it, we own part of it. Then I think that could be whoever yeah. the mayor says wants to go. Yep. I think they they approve the other right guys, but I think we approve one Just by yeah by peer investment. And I think that's the same way on the airport commission for the Yampa Valley Airport Commission. Do we get an automatic position? Because the city of Craig Moffat County have a position according to their bylaws. Right. So the commissioners have to approve, you know, if the city wants to put one up, then the commissioners have to approve it, and then the board has to approve it. Right. The, the uh, commi uh, airport board. The airport board almost seems to. Uh, I think you're right. Right, right, yeah. I think there's only three of them down there that are actually voting members. Both airport right. boards, and what's Both the other airports. one? I think the air, airport board and then the Northwest Transportation yeah. Planning. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you do. That's right, yeah. That's why it's so important that you're there. Well, and then close Club 20 and um, AGNC, but those are... Associated Gr Gr Governments of Northwest Colorado is yeah. the voting. I don't get any updates on Club 20. <laughs> it's because they haven't... <laughs> you should get a check for that. <laughs> well, we could actually uh, just make changes to this, bring it back next meeting. Sure. Okay. And you could vote on it when it's complete. That, yeah. Any, okay. Any corrections to this. Do that. Um, anyway. Is your well, that cleaned up a and lot. And I do think, Peter, we did determine right on Northwest Transportation Planning Region that that is an actual membership, or do you have, like, voting privileges, correct? You do. Okay. So we might want to just put that on that. Spreadsheet? Yeah, at the, at the bottom where it says appointment type. Sure. I don't know if that matters or not. But well, he had a question mark on that one, so yeah, so I think, yeah. You know, Andrea, I'd also like to have as backup Trevor Campbell on that one. Oh, yeah. Because so much of what happens there is yeah. going to sure. directly affect what he does. Yeah, he'd know he'd be great. And Roy goes usually with Ray. Um, he goes along for the county, too. So, Steve, how do you feel about the Amber River Fund, if you want something? Um, when does that mean? Uh, that's just, oh, that's a question. Random. <laughs> that one I struggle making sometimes. Yeah, yeah I mean. The Amber River Fund? I'm, yeah, I would mean, struggle to make it. do normally meet at the brewery? Oh, then I'm there. Afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm like, I, there's been, <clears throat> there has been a meeting there. I, I so oh, that's yeah, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take. I was it. the one that Jared made. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the only one I made exactly. I might mow you over it? after you know, right across the street after I get done with my shift. <clears throat> Steve needs a spotter. <laughs> yeah. If you were looking for something else, would you sure. be interested? I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Peter, so note that change there. Okay. Yeah, tell me what that was again. Yamper uh, River Fund. Okay. Very Bob. Steve. Yep, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Planning, are you staying on that as the planning? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm good. Is yeah. Chris uh, still on the Amper River Fund? Mm -hmm. I never attended one. Is he one. replacing you or? No, on the Steve, Steve's replacing me. Oh, he is, okay. Yeah. Chris has got Chris enough primary bad. jobs. Primary job, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've got to finish a lot of the checks over here. We haven't yeah, sure. Some of that, so we'll get that cleaned up. 
And even if we don't quite get it done next time, at least we're moving in the right direction. So do I need to talk to somebody about the Yamper River Fund to find out when the next meeting is? I'll, uh, I'll try to push you in the right direction. Okay. I'll see what I can come up with. Cool. We can send you some info. Yeah. On that. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, Paul, are you still good with your obligations on there with your newfound work schedule? I haven't heard anything from the county commissioners is the only thing. I don't know. Are they still doing the Zoom meetings? Like, I haven't heard. So. They'll be allowed 10 people. Have they been doing that? Okay, cool. So, yeah, I should be able to make th that. In downtown business? Um, yeah, that's that's easy. Like, any honestly, anything that's like, if there's anything that's like 6 a.m. to, you know what I mean, like 10 o'clock, I could do that. But okay. But that's okay. not most of the meetings, so. Got it. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, Peter, do you need a motion to table this until the next meeting or general consensus? Uh, I thought we just had discussion on this. Uh, if, if you're good with that. Yeah. Council, you're good with waiting for a revised copy at next meeting? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. And, and I will say it again, as I did last meeting, but uh, uh, Steve wasn't there, is you want any of my committee or board assignments, speak up. You can. So. You got a couple. Do you have any paid boards that you sit on? <laughs> uh, I, I yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the pay yeah. is real good. Yeah, <laughs> all of them. I'm never giving up the wildlife council one. That's the only one that you get paid for. Right? <laughs> Can't beat that. Oh, you get a paid position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you're out of here in a few months. Right? Yep. <laughs> oh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna call. <laughs> what are we gonna do? No, <laughs> you know, what? someone's gonna have to take it. It's right. <laughs> You know what? There, what's funny? As mayor, I see where I was probably my yeah, so <laughs> Their county, the guy that represents all the counties, is retiring in November too. So oh, I'm so you can just, just, to keep, just keep roll right over. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we will move on to item nine. Peter, do you got everything you need for that? I think so. Okay. All right. I'll just shoot it past you before the next meeting. Perfect. Let's look at it. Okay. Some. Well, we will move on to item 9B, discussion to adopt resolution number 11, 2020, a resolution to Governor Polis and the Monmouth County Board of Health supporting the safe reopening of restaurants and bars in the city of Craig as outlined by some of the objectives referred in the May 1st, 2020 letter from the Colorado Restaurant Association and addressed to elected officials across Colorado attached to this resolution. Peter, I'm going to let you start with that. Okay. Well, back on uh, January 28th, this is kind of consistent with the uh, white paper that we produced uh, that we titled Maintaining Essential Businesses and Community Services During a Pandemic Event. And our executive uh, summary for that white paper stated that the economic impact of a pandemic will be devastating to all sectors of the community. History demonstrates that small businesses closed during disasters for longer than three weeks often do not reopen. Uh, another paragraph in there was that the health of the population must be of the primary must be of primary concern. We understand that. However, the concern should be considered with practical consideration of the overall long-term economic impact of public health policies. There must be an effort to keep the impact of those policies from irreversibly damaging economic interests of the community as a whole. And so, what's amazing about this document that we produced? With no particular expertise in healthcare, no medical expertise, our prognostication powers were pretty pretty good in terms of what the economic impacts were going to be. In fact, they seemed to be much better than what the uh, mortality rates they initially predicted were, and those rates keep declining. And so, at this point, uh, the pandemic is basically a, a bad seasonal flu, is what it's turned out to be, <clears throat> even though it's not being handled that way. So in terms of what's happening to the restaurants, uh, we're asking the governor and the Moffat County Board of Health to support the safe reopening of the restaurants and the bars in the city of Craig, and by safe, using some, some of the same tactics that some of the other count, counties that have already been granted these variances uh, to open those uh, establishments at, uh, say, 30% of capacity. And so, uh, as we go through this uh, resolution, it uh, states what the outcome will be if that doesn't happen. Um, there's 
according to the Colorado uh, Restaurant Association, 12,500 e eating establishments across the sta state, 36 percent of those will be closed by the end of May if there's no action to improve uh, the restrictions and relax some of those restrictions. And of course, with some of the funding measures out there uh, through the trillions of dollars that will impact us later, that's probably going to prevent some of these statistics from being quite as bad, uh, at least initially. So anyway, by approving this, we hope to send this to our elected officials, to the uh, State Board of Health, the county, the Moffat County Board, and to the governor, and uh, that, at least that's our intent. If, and so this is basically a request uh, to recognize the economic impact of the virus and to uh, take prudent action to reopen these establishments. Okay. Um, I guess I'll open it up for comment from anyone. I will read the resolution in for the record. Um, so you don't have to bear with me on that. But if there any questions or comments from council before we move forward on any of that? I have a comment. Okay. I want more than this. Honestly, like I'm I'm honestly contemplating not even supporting this. Um not because I'm not in favor of moving forward, but um and I'm I'm sure that I'm not the only one that feels this way. I'm tired of asking. Do at, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? I mean, we've been hardly impacted by this virus and yet i mean our whole you know half our town is still shut down you know i mean we're cramming people in, in mass into city market and walmart and that's perfectly fine and you know so that like and and yet the small business owners are the ones that are suffering right now and that that's that's my issue with this i mean i'm I, of course you know i'm in favor of asking to do this uh but, I mean, even still, like, you know, if you talk to some of these restaurant owners, it, it's not worth it to open at 30% capacity because it's just going to cost them more money to make less money, you know, and, and it's, not, <laughs> it's not really that beneficial to them. You know what I mean? What I've heard from most of them has been, like, an all-or-nothing approach, you know, and that totally makes sense financially. Uh, that makes sense for their employees. Uh, I, I want more than this, and that's... That's my, you know, my two cents, I guess, so. And I guess my question would be, because um, obviously this came from, you know, the restaurant, um, whoever officially, I don't know. But anyway, I mean, I, I, I get that we would pass this resolution, but it would be from the Colorado Restaurant Association. Um, but my question is, do we then also have to have, because I know with our paperwork that we initially submitted to the governor's office, we had to have the county commissioners on board, the city council kind of had to sign off on it. We had the health board. So we had all these other individuals that had to kind of support that and sign off on it before we submitted. Is this, are we feeling like this is similar or is this just, we're going to present it as the city of Craig and we're not really going to have specifically you know, a approval from those other organizations. I guess I'm just not sure exactly how this is going to work. Right. I don't think we're asking for a variance. Um, this, this is not a variance request. Um, it's more of a letter of support. That, that'll come through the Moffat County right. uh, Board of Health. And uh, this is a city established position that this is a uh, these businesses and these families need support now and. Uh, we're asking you to recognize that and whatever steps you have to take, sure. you know. Paul, to your point, I, I, I don't think there's anyone in here that just, that just you know, does not agree with you. Um, this, is, this is our best step that we can take to show um, all our business owners in the community that we do support them 100%. Unfortunately, we're not the authority on whether or not... We abide by certain. You weren't picked by the people of Craig, right? The, pro the issue. We're not. Is we're not the public health department. Right. right. I understand. Right. So, so I that's our. That's. Understand that point. We're with you. We understand. Oh, okay. But what this is, is I feel, just my opinion, a step in the right direction, showing it's a political step, right? We're telling our governor. We're telling our our poor our board of public health. Hey, we're behind our businesses, and it says in here that by the end of May, we have to see results, which isn't soon enough, in my opinion. But at the same time, we had our meeting today with the Public Board of Health. They're basically working on putting together a version of this to submit as an addendum to our initial 
uh, letter that we sent to the governor's office, which we still haven't heard back from, unfortunately. Um, our hands are kind of tied. But this is a step we this can is the take. Best step we can take. So, yes. I, I mean, we get denied. Then, then what? We move one step at a time, Paul. Then, then we asked. I mean, there, but like, there's no plan moving forward from this. Well, I well, think, and I, I think this is where my frustration probably comes in as well as everybody else's is that we could say, and, and I would love for it to be in here that we say. We are not, you will not suffer any consequences from the city of Craig if you open. We are not policing this. Issue is, your license for your business doesn't come yeah. from the city of Craig. It yeah. comes from our governor who doesn't care, obviously, about Moffat County. Yeah. And so there's this fine line. I mean, I was really watching the news the other night and this restaurant that opens up in Castle Rock, the most they've ever had in there was 220 people throughout the day at 500 on Mother's Day, right? Because the people were like, I don't give a rip what you think. We're going to go do it. Right. Now they're saying, Governor Polis comes out and says, all right, we'll shut you down completely. You lost your license. Now good Definitely. luck. Right. Indefinitely. Indefinitely. Okay? Right. So, and I've been trying to tell people in the city that um, and there's 10 people watching right now, and maybe they'll they'll spread the word, but hey, you're not going to suffer any consequences from us. Because oh. we're not the ones doing it. Right. right. The, well, the PD is right. not going to show up at your business. The sheriff's office has already said they're not showing up at your business. We're not patrolling this. The consequences, though, come from above where we're at. We're oh, I'm all for I've told businesses all the time, I'm one of seven on the city council. You open up, I'm, I'll be there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll support you. <laughs> I'll support you. <laughs> but I can't, you can't blame us for consequences that come from the top down. From one either. person yeah. complaining to the, yeah. to the health. Yeah. Well, well, to a degree, that's number five, where we're, we're judging any enforcement action based on good faith. That's right. Right. Um, so, I mean, we're not flat out saying, hey, you know what, go out and do whatever you want to no, do. No, we're asking you to follow best practices, what guidelines. We're, is, is we're not going to use our city resources to enforce something at the state level. To right. Agree, unless it's, on our opinion, and still Probably. asking them to do it responsibly. Right. And right. who knows what the Board of Health will do. Well, we need, we need to put pressure on funding. our county commissioners to yeah. get a local Board of Health. Right. Well, they have the, to fund it, yeah. Well, either way, even yeah. if we have to help fund this thing. Right. One of the biggest issues that you're fighting is Dr. Harrington's is supposedly one of the best that there ever that there is that Steamboat has, but he's Route County. Right. This is mm -hmm. he, he's right. not thinking of Moffat County's issues. He's thinking of Route County's issues. Well, he's dealing with two separate communities. Exactly. Two separate issues. If we had a local public health doctor, nurse pushing that, I don't think you'd be in this position. I think they would they would approve it. And our people which, deserve to be governed locally. Yep. Which, we which just we're not there yet. What's interesting today that came out is that uh, with the new guideline from the governor, see something, say something. Oh, jeez. Uh, we've already had reports that bypassed all of those committees, went right to the state. Yep. And so we have a check mark, a black check mark against Cra Moffa next County. to Craig and Moffat County right now in terms of requesting any variances. And so we were warned by the folks, um, Dr. Harrington, Harrington's assistant, what's her name, Carrie? Carrie. Um, we were warned that uh, further... Um, Black marks. ...issues like that will prevent consideration from these requ for these requests. I mean, that was... Unfortunately, regardless of, of our own unique situation where we've had five... Six. ...cases. Right. right, that that are Six on the, and so the question was also five. asked: is, yeah. is our police department, uh, you know, are we in, are we doing what we can to enforce the guidelines of the uh, of the shutdown, or the safer at home now? And the answer uh, came from our chief to me this morning, in that yes, they're they're taking those complaints. We've had three since this policy came out yesterday. Is that right? Uh, for, to law enforcement? I think this uh, see something, say something policy. Yeah. So we've had three complaints come to law enforcement and they've done their due diligence. They went and consulted with the business, each of the businesses and said, okay, you've had this complaint. You know, if, if that's not corrected, that could go, that could elevate to the next level, which is the Board of Health. And if, if that's not corrected, then it goes to the next level. <clears throat> and so, um, there's probably a limit where we'll go, right. but um, 
the, the initial steps were taken? Well, the, the, the big stance is that everything that has been done has been an education movement. Nobody, ha nobody locally has ever been charged with the Title 25 or anything to do with a public health order, nor do I see that happening locally. Mm -hmm. Most of the ramifications for anybody that does choose to open up are at the state level. What, what the, the restaurant, restaurant Association is asking here is basically to kind of say that, that enforcement actions will be judged based on good faith and reasonable measures. And that the city, if there is red strings attached, if there's requirements you can't put stuff on sidewalks and stuff like that, that we just eliminate those. We don't do code enforcement for certain things. And that's kind of what we're doing here. And really to a degree, that's the most a city can do that doesn't have a public health role in this right now. We, we could pass an ordinance saying, mandating all the restaurants to open up and it has no legal effect. Right, right. for sure. Right. Um, I mean, that's really where we stand. Exactly. Well, I, I, think, I think the biggest argument from people is that um, it, nothing makes sense? Well, there's no consistency, right? right? It's inconsistent. And what we want, I think, as a, as a city council, to be consistent. You know, I finally said that we were opening up our um, recovery program that we started two years ago. We opened up last night. I thought, so you could go get alcohol or, or pot, but you can't go to a recovery group. Like, <laughs> how how is this? How is this even making sense, guys? Right. Like, this is this. If you could do one of those, you should be able to go to the place that if you have an addiction that you can go and try to get help from. Yeah. Um, right. And so we, we finally just said, <laughs> we got to do this. And I, and, we, and I think this is where people in Moffat County and that I don't want to see happen. And I don't know what we do as a city council, but I don't want it to get to a place where they everybody throws their fingers up and say, we're going to do what we want. And now our officers are now in right. stuck into a well, particular I, situation. Well. Yeah, if to you, do that. I don't want that because then right. that could get real bad, right? right. And you know, if you read the Steamboat Police Blotter, you know, they gave the report. They ran on 170 calls reporting the, the violation for COVID-19 violations. You know, I don't want to see our, our law enforcement so tied up to those yeah. last month. So I support this 100%. This is within our power. This right. is all we I can agree. do uh, from that standpoint. Hopefully we can influence the the county board of health with is the commissioners yeah. to you know continue pursue this so uh why can we have an emergency ordinance that makes it illegal for any of the state health workers to come and shut these businesses down for non-compliance you couldn't do it right? why we have that authority you're right they you know, it's tough it. to go against public health. It's called preemption you know. law because it's state law. A city can't come in and tell the state what to do. So the state law preempts anything that we say. Right. And is Trump card. It's just like federal preemption. Yeah. There's just certain things that they occupy the field, and they occupy the field of public health. And a city could come in and say, you can't come in here and do any enforcement action, and you can't do anything. You, you, can't, you can't tell them what to do. I think even Route County uh, Public Health, they, their own board, still has to go report to the state. That's right. You know, so but you can make it more strict. Yeah, right. you can make it more strict. Just, more strict. Yeah, you can make it more strict. You just can be more lenient. Yeah, right? which I just don't understand how Rio Blanco County got got theirs done already. And yeah, when they filed fine. after us, yeah, right? Yeah, that's why we were the third county to file. Right. That's how fast we were. Right. And some of that is, is some... Even our second filing. <laughs> well, and, and some of that's the, the frustration in the process is that we submitted it pretty much at, in unison with Summit and Eagle. Yep. I mean, Eagle and uh, Mason ASAP. County. Yep. And then they changed the process within 12 hours of that, and then we had to resubmit it to a different right. way. And now it's we, lost. And then we had to redo it again. shuffled, and, and now we're redoing it. So that part is getting frustrating because we've done our part to the state of saying, hey, <clears throat> we want this variance. Um, and, well, and well, well, now we're, we're in the process, uh, Moffat County will be submitting, hopefully, before the end of the week, an addendum to the variance uh, asking for restaurants under the guidelines that basically I think Rio Blanco has instituted, yeah. <clears throat> which are a little bit less than uh, Mesa County. 
Well, we're, we're more similar to, to, out of all the counties that are getting variances, we're more similar to Rio Blanco Rio as far Blanco, as effect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And is there room in that, Peter? I was just curious. Um, instead of having, I, I hate one size fits all. So because you and Jared sat in on that meeting, instead of saying it can only be 30% of your capacity or whatever, as long as they're meeting the social distancing, that six foot requirement, could we not have restrictions on like a percentage? Is that a possibility? I don't know. I mean, okay. uh, I That's think true. we asked for up to 50 people in our last, or did we? We Did we omit that? It was omitted. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty That's sure what we that. tried to do. Yeah, we yeah, omitted that. We but the we were going to ask for up to 50 people, so I guess maybe that was. We could probably change that. I mean, they're used to seeing 30%, but like uh, Paul said, there's some restaurants, I mean, this is all voluntary. They're going to look at 30% and say, I can't afford to bring any wait staff in for 30% of my capacity. Well, but as we heard on the call yeah, that day. from the restaurants, a waste of food, when, it, when they prepare food and everything else, then it goes to wait because they can't, they don't have enough people coming in. But we've also heard from those restaurants that would love to open to whatever capacity they can. Yeah, they're yeah. like, just let us. Right. And so I think yeah. you can so give it to them, put it in their court. Say. Well, I think they're looking at it as if we're doing delivery, we can do delivery. But if we're going to open up at 20%, it doesn't make sense to open up 20%. Sure, so we're just going to continue delivery. But it's their option. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just it. It's going to be their option. Absolutely. You know? I think it's government job just come up with the guidelines and best practices, and the businesses need to determine if they can live by them. There are the other thing is by May 25th, uh, that standard could change. Well, and there are other areas that do a square footage requirement, and which seems to be the most common sense. Instead of saying 10, 15, 20 people, if you got a 40,000 foot square foot building you can put a lot more people in there with social distancing well that's Walmart? the 30 percent capacity <laughs> comes in and that's what they're saying about phase yeah. two is trying to move from a percentage to going off your square foot which yeah. is most of ours if you open up at full capacity they're still less than yes yeah well that's what i put in when i submitted our church deal for the to the public health on monday phase one was less than 50 people phase two was a percentage of our capacity yeah um, I mean, as an essential business, you know, like right. Walmart's counting as you walk in and people are counting as you walk out. But they don't do I anything. Asked the lady, I'm like, how many people are in here? She's like, I don't know. I'm just clicking here. Just <laughs> Great. I was just curious. I, how I many like that, are though. Here. Like, let's be realistic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't see in Rio Blanco's if they went to a full open or a 30%. <sighs> so so then based on 30%. I'm super no, I, I'll entertain a motion for sure. <laughs> If that's where we're at. Okay, so I just have one more question. So based sure. on, again, your meeting today, um, are we now encouraging businesses, since we're hoping that we should be hearing something back, are we encouraging businesses, restaurants that are wanting to, to get open sooner rather than later to go ahead and start filling out that paperwork and getting that plan put together? I think so. Is I that mean, that's, that's, maybe I mean, the direction? I, 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 to me, that's what I feel like. The city's saying we're behind you. We're trying to push the people that make these decisions into allowing us to go to this percentage, right? And, and we obviously state, like Ryan alluded to on five, that uh, we, you know, and judge all restaurants on good faith efforts to comply with the new reopening guidelines and requirements. So absolutely, right? Yeah. Fill out that, I guess, application, if you will, whatever that was in the original, <clears throat> which is posted on our website, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Peter? Well, are you, yeah. All right. You ready or? Yeah, I, I'll entertain a motion for sure. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 11, 2020. I'll second. <laughs> okay, so the motion was made by Councilman Nichols, seconded by Councilman Mazuka to uh, approve resolution number 11, 2020. Um, I'm going to read that in for the record as quickly as possible. So resolution number 11, 2020, whereas the City Craig Council recognized the importance and concern of the Colorado Restaurant Association in asking elected officials across the state of Colorado for support in opening their businesses as soon as possible. Whereas the City Council also recognizes that this group of businesses are some of the hardest hit businesses in our state and in many cases are now desperately looking for relief from the closure of their dining areas and seating areas. Whereas the CRA represents some 12,500 eating and drinking establishments across the state of Colorado, including their employment of 294,000 people, making up 10% of Colorado's workforce, and for which the overwhelming majority of those establishments are small, locally owned businesses. Whereas the City Council recognizes that 91% of Colorado restaurant operators say they have laid off or furloughed employees since the coronavirus 
coronavirus outbreak in March and forecasts that 36% of operators will permanently close their doors by the end of May without any relief from the restrictions that are currently imposed. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council for the City of Craig, Colorado, as follows. The City Council asks that Governor Polis and the Moffat County Board of Health relieve the harsh burden placed on these businesses in our community based on the extraordinary low incidence of serious COVID-19 infections and the need to balance the economic impact with the safe management and prevention of future infections by doing the following. One, allow for the safe reopening of these establishments in Craig as we work closely with the Moffat County Board of Health to implement appropriate guidelines that would encourage in-store dining along with guidelines for social distancing and employee PPE usage. Number two, provide the announced intent to reopen with ample notice, preferably by mid-May, so that these establishments will have time to retool for an on-time reopening. Three, with ample notice of reopening date given to restaurants and bars, the City Council of Craig proposes their ongoing support through public comment, marketing, and social media posts to encourage healthy patrons to eat out in restaurants in order to support these vital businesses in our community to prevent them from closing, as well as to boost the economy of Craig. Four, the City Council also proposes to hear requests from this group of businesses that would enable a faster recovery with support in managing certain city payments and fees, promoting the use of temporary signage and public banners to advertise their food offerings and specials, allow businesses to continue temporary stop-and-go meal pickups outside their restaurants for a defined period of time in 2020, support license expansion plans for patios, parking lots, and other adjacent areas as appropriate. Five, enforcement activity. The City Council will support and judge all restaurants on good faith efforts to comply with these new reopening guidelines and requirements. This resolution shall be shall take effect upon adoption, shall be authenticated, and shall be numbered and recorded in the official records of the city. If any provisions of this resolution or the application of it to any person or circumstances is held invalid by a court competent jurisdiction, such invalidity shall not affect other provisions or applications of this resolution, which can be given effect without the invalid provisions or applications. The provisions of this resolution are expressly declared to be servable. Read and approved this 12th day of May 2020 by the City Council for the City of Craig, Colorado. Liz, I will have you poll the council, please. Councilman Aye. Councilwoman Aye. Councilman Aye. Councilman Boyer. Aye. Councilman Aye. Councilman James. Aye. Councilman Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Peter, thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, up next is uh, staff reports. Uh, looks like we have a police report from the chief. <clears throat> yep. Now does it work? Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off that probably all of you know we. Had a little incident at 403 Taylor last week. It, st it started out in August of 19, uh, but uh, Monday morning in the early hours, one of the patrol officers was going by the building and saw smoke coming out of there and stopped, got the fire department there, and then Fire Chief Hume showed up, and then uh, the same chemicals that he saw in August of 2019 were in the same spot that they were. Uh, and we're talking about cyanide or sodium cyanide and peroxide. And with, I think there was uh, two and a half barrels of liquid peroxide and about 240 pounds of sodium cyanide that they use in the extraction of gold from gold and silver from uh, the ground. I completed a warrant abatement warrant affidavit. Uh, Judge Cannon signed it. So Thursday morning, along with the hazmat team, we went in there and uh, removed those chemicals. And we have them uh, stored in two different uh, areas in the city of Craig. And I'm trying to work on getting rid of that stuff. I think 
it could be a very costly endeavor for uh, us to get rid of them. I've called companies that sold this type of chemical to try to get them to come up and get it. And so far I've had no luck. I've also been in contact with company out of Grand Junction just to come up and get it. And then we'd pay for the hazmat fee for them to dispose of it. So I'll keep you apprised of that. Uh, as you see in the report, uh, Brian Soper is coming back as a reserve officer. Uh, and so he'll be working, uh, he'll be riding with other officers. He'll have to go through a training program, but we'll get him where he's back out on the street and kind of figured he missed it because he kept on coming down there. So, which is good for us and the city. Uh, let's see, we've uh, been hitting uh, Sherwood Forest that, you know, we've been walking through there. And then we've been still walking through the local businesses, uh, uh, Walmart, City Market, Walmart, and downtown. And, and I think that's uh, an increase. What you see in an increase of calls for service is we've been having more time to do things of that nature. And plus, you know, make some traffic stops, as outlined in the report itself, you know, 59 and a 40 in that area of Craig up by the south of the city shops, that's a little too fast. And last year we got complaints on the semis going uh, north out of town and we ended up catching one. I think it was like 53 or 54 in a 40. So we're, we're keeping busy doing stuff like that. And then if you have any questions about the report itself. Hey, Jerry, you wanna talk about the 15th as well? The parade. I didn't hear you, Peter. You want to talk uh, briefly about the uh, plans that you and the SO and the fire department have for the 15th at 7 o'clock? Oh, okay. Uh, Governor Polis uh, has requested uh, a minute of silence for the victims that have perished through COVID-19. Well, we're going to take it a little further. We're going to a little bit before seven, we're gonna stage at City Park and then just have a procession from City Park involving the fire department, the state patrol, the sheriff's office, uh, the ambulance service and us. And we're gonna go down uh, Victory Way to Yampa with just our lights on, no siren, and then go north to 6th Street, and then we'll disperse there. I'm thinking it'll probably take maybe 10, 15 minutes, depending on how many uh, first responders that we have show up. So I, I think it, it'll be a good showing for Craig that you know we do care about not only our community, state of Colorado, but just the nation that you know we need to honor these folks. And then one other thing I want to briefly go over on the 23rd and the mayor, we've talked about it, but they're, we're gonna combine the senior graduating class parade. They're gonna approximately a hundred cars. They'll be staged at the North parking lot of the middle school. And then the Grand Old West Days parade will be staged in front of the middle school. We're gonna escort the seniors up to the high school where they can get their diplomas and uh, have that event at the high school. And once the uh, Grand Old West Days Parade gets to Ledford, they're gonna go north and just continue with the uh, regular parade route. So we've been working with uh, the school district and uh, the state troll and sheriff's office because uh, this is going to be the longest parade that I've ever seen, uh, and I've been here 35 years, so it's going to be quite interesting to see, and I, and I think it's going to be a great event for the community. Chief, I think the final count for the school is 90 cars for the seniors, plus we've got all three Suburbans for the Board of Education. Oh, okay. is going to be in front, too. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think Peter said he estimated this at how many miles, Peter? 
it's exa I think it was exactly like 1.7 miles, but the parade itself is going to be over a mile. Right, right, in cars length, right? Yeah, by the time you get escorts and everything else. Yeah. Right? And the distance between. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I just, one, one question for the chief. Yeah. Jerry, Chris Nichols here. Hey, um, according to hazmat laws, the owner of the product, backing up to that call, is responsible for mitigation and cleanup. Yeah. There is, you can't get the owner or you, because obviously the fire district going to have some costs associated with that as well. Yeah, and, you know, and, and th this situation that we're dealing with is that the person that's living in there right now, he's the one that put the chemicals in there. The proper owner of the property just got it back probably right, right before the COVID stuff hit. So he just got it back on foreclosure. He didn't have a chance to even evict those individuals. So I, you know, I'm, I, I guess the soft spot in my heart is that, you know, this guy just got his property back. And so why, why should we penalize him for that when the gentleman that did previously, you know, make payments on the place, he's going to walk away scot-free. And that, that's my concern. And, you know, I'm going to try to get it done as cheap as I can. I knew that, you know, the owner of the property was responsible for the hazmat stuff, but I feel uncomfortable going after the gentleman that just got his property back through foreclosure. And, you know, it wasn't his fault at all. If that makes sense to you, Chris. Yeah, it's non-collectible. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, you probably, Thanks. <clears throat> you could probably stand in line against everybody that has Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't get blood out of turnip, is what you're saying? Hey, Chief, um, remind me to uh, reach out to me tomorrow. Your uh, CSO, Hannah Wood, reached out to me about some things with the dog park um, in one of our schools. So if you can remember to do that, please. Okay, I will. Thank you. Any other questions for the Chief? No, thanks for doing that abatement. I appreciate it. <laughs> <No>. Yes. <laughs> okay, Chief. Heidi, thank you. Thank you. All right, up next we have uh, Parks and Rec Report. Good evening, Council and Mayor. We have a little update from Parks and Recreation and kind of what we've been uh, doing the last couple weeks. I've been bouncing around uh, from Breeze Park and other projects uh, as we're kind of gearing up towards the end of uh, Breeze Park uh, there. I want to thank Road and Bridge for uh, assisting us with uh, quite a few um, tandem loads of topsoil to kind of finish up around uh, the sidewalks and things there. Uh, the swimming complex is, uh, I think you have a picture, hopefully, there. Um, crews removed and prepped some of the sand filters uh, to make a way for the new ones, and which uh, was great. It was great working with that uh, um, crew from CN CEM. They're super professional, and uh, we're right on, on spot there, uh, getting in and out and doing just a great, uh, great job with the install. So we're excited to get that, uh, that lap pull up and running, uh, working on it this week to, to have it uh, operational uh, there. Uh, Fourth Street Park, we have a final inspection um, this week uh, with CDOT and Myers uh, construction to, to make sure everything is good to go. Uh, I think this project uh, is better, came out better than anticipated. So. Uh, looking forward um, to seeing that through, and it's a uh, it's nice seeing some green grass over over there. So, um, what else? I think it looks better. The wayfinding signs, uh, Hindem signs, came up last week to do some potholing, getting ready uh, to, for installs on the signs. So that was great. Spent a couple hours. Uh, Melanie um, and I went with uh, um, the gentleman from Hindem Signs and went around town. So that's, that's exciting to um, be coming here here shortly. Special events, uh, what of the wood cancellation and a handful of people reach out just within the community or uh, phone calls on, on what of the wood and um, they're understandable. And, and um, so that was, that was, it was, it went well. Uh, 
uh, where's the hell Maybell bicycle ride. Uh, I got a ride in that the first time since I've been here in Craig and I made it. So <laughs> that was, it was awesome. It was, it was a fun ride at around, I think the count was 50, 50 bike riders, somewhere around there. And um, we had some uh, comments um, in regards to Maybell from some residents uh, on on putting on the event. They weren't, uh, um, they're skeptical of, of the event, but uh, I believe Peter spoke with uh, uh, the lady from the store and, and she was all for it. But overall it was, it was great, great ride, great to see people out and enjoying themselves on that. Do you guys have any questions? Nope, but it doesn't look like it, Ryan. Thank you for the report. Yeah. Okay. Um, up next, uh, city manager report. Okay. Uh, you have this uh, nice little piece here that Melanie put together for you uh, for cleanup days uh, on Saturday the 16th. That'll be out at Loudy Simpson this year. It starts at 8 o'clock. So there'll be four tracks uh, so they can keep all the different uh, streams separated and Keep the social distancing in place, and uh, yeah, so it'll be it'll be good. You have to pay for tires this year. If you do have car and truck tires, it'll be two bucks a tire um, to help defray roughly. I think it's about five dollars for the landfill to handle them. Uh, the cemetery cleanup happens the Friday before, and uh, we've uh, got quite a few employees that are going to participate in that as as they trail off at the end of the day on Friday. So they'll be up there. And uh, hopefully we'll get a great turnout for that. And people bring their rakes and their gloves and their, they didn't put wheelbarrows on here, but I think we talked about wheelbarrows so you could wheel your stuff over to the dumpsters. Uh, the uh, solid waste group is gonna have dumpsters up there so that we don't have to go too far to, you know, to take our grass clippings and branches and trash and stuff like that. That will be a good event and uh, help them get the cemetery squared away before Memorial Day this year. Uh, so Bill Sixkiller, and I, I think he's going to be kind of organizing things when we get up there. We'll see how that goes. Since our last meeting, uh, we, the Yampa building, we've negotiated uh, with some of the tenants and the chamber for, for the terms and the tenant lease, so we've got that pretty well pulled together. Uh, in fact, I think I got it this afternoon. I haven't reviewed the final edition of that, uh, so we'll get that out. So. Uh, we can start securing the tenants for a July 1st move-in at uh, the Ampa building. Of course, we won't be doing that. Our manager will. Uh, and that'll be Jennifer Holloway. So she's uh, she'll be managing that operation. And uh, the, the leases, though, will be between the city and the tenants. So, <clears throat> uh, see, I, I'm also working on the... Um, the attorney questions, I put a practical together of sorts. I'm having it reviewed by our current city attorney before I go out to the two attorneys with it. And uh, I plan on getting that out tomorrow. Uh, so we should have responses um, hopefully uh, early next week to see, to see how that looks. And uh, we'll come back to the city council, probably have to arrange another meeting so we can talk about the, the responses and uh, Maybe at that time make a selection that uh, we can approve at the next uh, council meeting. Uh, so um, last week uh, we also, I toured all of the uh, net metering sites. McKinstry was in town from Denver. Uh, Steamboat Springs is the uh, fiscal agent on that grant, but uh, I've kind of been the organizational side of uh, for Moffat County and, and uh, so I went to each of the locations. I was up on the hospital roof, the MOB roof. Uh, I was up with uh, Jared at the high school. We looked at that location for the solar field up there, the public safety center, and then the two net metered sites, uh, potential net metered sites out at wastewater and the water treatment plant. All of those sites look good. I mean, they, they all have great possibilities for a, uh, uh, they call it a performance contract uh, to establish at least 150 uh, kilowatt solar field, up to the 300 kilowatt solar field. If you've got two meters, you can go up 
you can go uh, potentially to 300 kilowatts, which is, uh, if you figure 5 to 10 kilowatts per average home, uh, you're talking, uh, what, 30 to 60 homes, uh, depending on uh, how you equate uh, energy use uh, for each of those locations to help offset the power usage at those locations. Um, the, uh, the other solar project, uh, both of these are in tandem. They're happening right now. Uh, we, we have narrowed down to four, four locations for uh, approximately a 10-acre location for two megawatts of power. And uh, three of the locations were here in Moffat County, one in Hayden. Um, got some feedback from Yampa Valley Electric, Ben Hoffner. I don't know if you know their engineer up there. He, he, re he reviewed each of the four locations, came back with some detail on that, and helped us narrow that down probably to two locations, which happen to be both in Moffat County at this point. Um, and so uh, Amoresco is the, uh, the contractor on that. Amoresco will be out here. We'll get Yampa Valley Electric together. We'll look at the sites, and then the next step will be to uh, have uh, one of the uh, geotech companies that we're looking at to come up and do some soil borings to make sure that they can sustain the piers, and uh, that'll all go into the feasibility, which we plan on having by end of July, sometime in August, in time for the grant application process. And uh, I don't know if you heard about the uh, chloramine, chloramine project uh, to date. Uh, still some hiccups with uh, chloramines. We had, we had a valve fail. So they're coming up to fix that. Uh, we had injected some chloramine. Uh, they had to curtail it. Um, I don't think Mark is on the line, is he? Okay. Maybe I can have him give us an update on that. All right, yeah, um, we, Monday we started at about 12.45, starting the chloramines injection into the uh, system from the treatment plant. Um, we had a couple hiccups with the SCADA, like, like uh, Peter was saying. We had to shut down for a couple hours to get those fixed, and also a leaking ammonium sulfate uh, line had to be repaired earlier this morning, so we had to go to a different pump, but... Overall, we ran, I think, about four hours on the uh, uh, chloramine system yesterday, and we put in six hours today. Uh, today, we only had a few minor little glitches that we were easily able to resolve quickly. But uh, it's starting to come around, and we're trying to fine-tune it. Uh, we, we, we foresee it uh, getting better each day, so we're on our way. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Yep. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilman Hans? Council? Council, this is Ryan. Yeah. Hey, did you guys receive uh, a packet on the swimming pool by chance? I wasn't for sure if you that was included in your packet. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sure. You did? Yep. Perfect. Can we just hit on that real quick? Sure. Sure. Sorry about that. It wasn't for sure that was in. So uh, we've been working on this document to try to get the pool reopened this summer at a smaller capacity um, than we have obviously in the summer or previous summers and just taking baby steps. There's really, as far as guidance on swimming pools on in recreation sports, it really it's limited. We've been on um, calls weekly with uh, Colorado Parks and Rec Association um, and just trying to everyone's kind of sharing um, the information they have. But this is just a draft of thing to submit to city council, get their thoughts, and then uh, to Moffat County Public Health, get their thoughts and, and kind of move forward uh, to anticipate an opening of our, of our swimming pool at the end of May. Um, all the procedural changes on really would be uh, just at the capacity of 50, 50 patrons. Or like 38 swimmers, uh, 12 uh, personnel in there, and then doing sessions with disinfecting um, a, a period within there, having traffic flow, um, social distancing, things like that to really mark it up, and and, and just kind of have a, a good outline 
uh, to submit and, and get uh, feedback uh, and do that do it the right way so so we can anticipate it uh, opening. So I just wanted to to get that to you guys and, and see what your thoughts were moving forward. I like it. I think 38 is kind of small for the size of the facility, but I understand you're limiting the 50 person role, but I think the plan looks good. Mm -hmm. yep. I agree. Yeah, I, 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 I'm glad to see we have something. We, we need to get this out to and open to the public as soon as possible. Yes, yeah, so they're going to want it <clears throat> soon. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Yep, thanks, you. Ryan. Okay, uh, Councilman Hess, we'll, start, we'll try again. Yeah, I'll be brief. Uh, main meeting has been the charter review. I believe probably after our next meeting, we should have four items to bring to the full council, which I think uh, two of them kind of pair off of each other, and then a couple that are not interrelated. But uh, just food for thought, maybe if once we get those four items out, we may want to take some time with that same committee and go through our ordinances with some of the issues that, that our judge brought up the last time, and maybe go through and do some of that stuff too and have kind of a month of big legislative work. So just food for thought for the rest of the council. Um, other than that, uh, tomorrow, Colorado goes to the U.S. Supreme Court over the unfaithful electorate, and it's being televised or it's being broadcast, so it may be a good one to listen to about the member of the Electoral College decided to vote as they felt versus as the state told them to. Tenth Circuit went with the person or the electorate, so it's for the Supreme Court. So tomorrow it'll be live stream. Might be some interesting stuff to listen to. So just information. Okay. All I got. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Mazuka. Um, really, the only thing I had was a charter review, which Ryan already hit on, so won't be redundant. Uh, I got Parks and Rec tomorrow, CNCC next Monday, and um, I think the only thing else that we did besides the attorney interviews was uh, the EMS meeting, which we were all part of, and I see that new ambulance at <laughs> every drive through and uh, restaurant in town. So Yes, sir. <laughs> Starbucks truck, right? <laughs> So that's, a, that's the rumor, it's a delivery vehicle. So. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Councilman Nichols. Um, just a couple things, I'll cut this down. Uh, okay. COVID, uh, the coronavirus incident management team meetings used to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They've reduced them now to once a week uh, due to the low occurrence of cases and the activity going on. Uh, they're Wednesdays at 8.30 a.m., so... Uh, nothing's changed on our last meeting on number of cases or or and they have expanded community testing to two different times and dates all the community testing 26 the first time 20 the second time came back negative so that's great for our community and yep. it helps support us getting things moving again those kind of numbers so yeah absolutely um, Couple things, A and A G N C. Their legislative calls are weekly. There's three things I want to cover on there. There's going to be a ballot initiative uh, across the state. Petitions are out now, trying to get it on the ballots uh, for uh, paid leave, and this is being funded by Families First Group. They put up five hundred thousand dollars to help fund the effort to get that approved, so it'll be mandatory family leave and paid leave for all businesses. So you want to keep an eye on that and see, especially if you own a business, what kind of impact it will have. Um, Gallagher Amendment is still out there right now. The Gallagher Amendment, uh, uh, as the metro and most parts of the state, as a residential growth that has happened in the past, uh, there, it determines the assessment rate for residential and, and commercial businesses. Um, as a residential rate outpaces commercial, it ratchet, ratchets down between Gallagher and Tabor what the special districts can, you know, and their amount of income and revenue because resi residential assessment is, is capped at 45% of the total, businesses at 50%. 50 uh, originally, they wanted to appeal Gallagher. You'll hear more about this. 
but the legislature wants to have activity to freeze it at 7.15% residential assessment and 29 cent for commercial, 29% of, you know, of your value. So th that's the other. The other big thing happening at the state level on legislative call is the Joint Budget Committee. Um, they're reviewing the budget and they have to cut $3.5 billion out of the state budget. And where they're going to cut that is in a lot of the programs and a lot of the, you know, things that we see from everything from economic development <coughs> the state to funding for disabled people, Medicare, Schools. or Medicaid programs. So you might want to kind of listen to what's happening Brutal. in that area as well. Um, I think another one of those big cuts is going to be school districts. Right. They've well, already told them to prepare for a 10% cut. Well, and then there's going to be less oil and gas activity, right. what's going on. So right. it definitely hits all the special districts, you know, sure. especially in, you know, what's going to happen there. Right. Um, uh, some of the money that's been approved, I think Memorial Regional Health received a check from the CARES Act. I didn't mention how much it was. Yampa Valley Regional Airport uh, from the CARES funding received $18.5 million. Moffat County Airport received $30,000, you know. Same thing Steamboat Airport on. <laughs> yeah. St Steamboat Airport only received 30000 as well. So, so, but that's just some of the local funding that's come back out of the CARES Act. And statewide, it's something like um, $7 billion in PPP funds in Colorado alone. So, yeah. So. Uh, it's about what else do I have? Thank God the Lakers. Uh, chamber board meeting tomorrow or Thursday and COVID call Wednesday and so ongoing. That's all. Thank you, sir. Uh, Council Bone Camp. Uh, so let's see. Since we last met, um, uh, I tried to uh, zoom in to the Moffat County Tourism Association committee meeting last week, but I think that was the day that the internet was not cooperating very True. well. So. Um, anyway, we do have another, uh, sure. their regular Moff County Tourism Association yeah. meeting is tomorrow afternoon, so that will be via Zoom. Um, of course, we had our attorney interviews, so I'm um, looking forward to continued conversation along those lines and making that decision. Um, there is scheduled to be an LMD board meeting on Thursday at 4. I haven't gotten an update on that, so I'll check in on that one. And then, um, of course, when Moffat County Tourism and the Chamber get moved into their new location at the Yampa building, um, they are looking to host an event um, based on that Craft 201 um, where they received, obviously, that the funds to help kind of put this together. So they've uh, got this great presentation here kind of based on what that plan looks like and this strategy moving forward. And they're hoping to host an event on July 16th at the Yampa building that will kind of unveil this whole plan and, cool. and give us a little more detail on that. So looking forward to actually having an event there. Yeah, It'll be kind yeah. of exciting to see all the work that they're doing. Um, and, of course, we have EDC meeting next week on Monday the 18th. And I think that's it. Okay. Councilman James? Um, the DBA did start meeting again, so I've been to a couple of those meetings. Um, it's kind of just been canceling some of the events they were going to put on, but they're still shooting for, like, the home, you know, homegrown, home, home brewed, uh, you know, stuff later in the summer. They're hoping that they can still do that, the balloon festival. Um, so, but, I mean, you know, they're in the same boat as everybody else. So, you know, so other than that, just been working. Councilman Boyer? Yeah. Uh, much. So everybody's kind of mentioned city attorney um, interviews. Um, I won't be at the EDC meeting Monday. I'll be there. Steve will be. So. <laughs> but I will be, be at the uh, joint service meeting on Tuesday. So, Sweet. yeah, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make that switch there. Um, you know, hopefully everybody had uh, a good uh, weekend. And happy Mother's Day to Andrea and yeah. every other yeah. mother that... Call it. that we uh, we try to honor for that day and then um, I think that's about it I'll be tried to tune in to the um, parade I guess that the, the silent parade that Jerry's gonna do I was thinking maybe he should um, we should change it because we haven't had any of those um, <laughs> maybe to the essential workers that uh, maybe we do a parade for them the only thing I had was I was praying and hoping that uh, dr. Um, 
David Ulrich was just going to say, you know what, I'm out of here anyway, so um, we're holding graduation like normal. <laughs> Fire me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I was, I, I was. I was hoping that he was going to push you that and just say, hey, this is what we're going to do. But His he, favorite saying is you can do whatever you want on your last yeah, day. Yeah, right. That's all I was thinking. I was thinking, man, this is, this is his opportunity to do that. Which I know he's going to be looking for future employment. So yeah. yeah. I, I, I get that too. So sure. <laughs> Or not will employ. Yeah, yeah right, 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 right. But if he already secured a job, maybe it was good too. <clears throat> yeah. Just go ahead. Right, right. Anyway, uh, looking forward to honoring the senior classes. As much as we can. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, had the board meet or uh, excuse me, the board and commission meeting with uh, Dan, Ryan, and Peter. Um, I think we got some good clarification. Seems like we can get some good direction tonight. So next week, looking forward to getting that hammered out. Um, Ryan, thank you again for all your work on that. Appreciate it. Um, the att attorney interviews. That was that was good. Curious to see how the questions come back from that. I'm excited to get to that next step. Yeah, yeah. Um, whether everyone's aware or not, we uh, we had a kind of a quick faux cleanup day. We ran a dumpster down to Hamilton uh, on the 9th um, for about a half a day. I went down and helped those folks out. Ended up getting about one full dumpster there. Uh, Access Steel took down a metal dumpster. Got it about three quarters full, so that was nice. That much less stuff ended up in the creek or the ditches, you know. Um, and then reminded some of those folks that come up next weekend for anything else you've got. So um, looking forward to cleanup days this, uh, this coming weekend. Um, the school is uh, going to put, I'm thinking, I don't know, 10 to 14 folks out there for the afternoon. Um, I told the, at the cemetery. At cemetery. Yep, yep, yep. So there's going to be a big group coming out there. Um, our family's about 14 now, so we ought to be able to match that. I told them they're all on the hook for this. <laughs> They had choice words for me. Um, <laughs> so we'll be out there in full force helping out. Um, the rest of that I think is, is going to be great. Um, Mother's Day. Yep, happy Mother's Day. We uh, we decided as a family to go to Hayden and uh, get firewood. So there's a, a ranch up there that's for sale just before you get to Hayden, historic ranch on the north side of the road. You have to cross the tracks and drop right in there. And, yeah, the nice folks. I've got a bunch of dead fallen trees, and we go up there, and, and we've done two weekends now. So we did that, and then we came back and barbecued. And, yes, there's, like, 14 of us there, so we're totally breaking the 10 people rule. But we figure it's our family, our house. We're going for it. <laughs> you can have family, can you? Yeah, I think so. Um, the Charter Review Committee, that was that was decent. Um, I... Uh, I think we've got that narrowed down to some pretty good, pretty good stuff. I think we should have something for council by July, right? Worst case, yeah. yeah. Worst case, maybe maybe into June. I think it's July. Yeah, somewhere right in there, um, with more to come uh, yeah. next year. We, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Peter and I went to the the special board of health meeting. They called us today. Sit down, had some good conversation. I feel like um, the commissioners are on board with us, trying to get this, trying to get this moved. Our our. Uh, Health officials are a little more reluctant, but but still understand the need for getting our economy back in shape as well, especially given the fact that we have so few cases in the in the county. So, um, yeah. That being said, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. <laughs> What's that? Did you did Steve go? Yeah, yeah I, Steve asked, I asked him the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> did you go? And he's like, yeah, I made fun of him. Peter, I mentioned. The yeah, mini right. grants are now are open too. Yeah, I was like, okay. He was quick. Yeah, sure. All I had was there. Yeah. 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 Ye